Hey, what's going on guys? So today is Thanksgiving, I'm on call, so here we are starting the day, starting our 24 hour shift. What I wanna talk about a little bit in this video is a little discussion about, you know, whether or not psychiatry is the kind of place that anybody can go. So if you're a bad student, if you have bad scores, is that the place for you? So I like to say that psychiatry was long thought of as a cesspool of undesirables. So I'll speak a little bit about my thoughts on that. If you like the videos, please subscribe to the channel um, and comment on things. Help me out, you know, let me know what works for you guys, what's interesting about it, and what kind of questions you have about the field in general. Anyway, I'm going to cut it there for now and we'll crack into the video next. Alright guys, let's crack into the video talking a little bit about psychiatry being sort of that cesspool of undesirables. Uh, before we do, if you're interested in the channel, please like, subscribe to the channel. It helps me um, and you know, comments are always appreciated. Anything that can help uh, build the channel and make it a little bit better for everyone, I'm open to. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about psychiatry as a specialty and how it relates to sort of this idea that it's the place where people go when they have poor scores, poor grades, and just can't get into anything else. And the idea kind of came to me because yesterday we were discussing with some of our medical students that psychiatry has now become one of the middle tier specialties. So what we mean by that is that a lot of medical schools when they're counseling people on how they should go about applying for the residency match, they're suggesting that people who are applying psychiatry now make the decision to apply to family medicine as a backup or some other specialty that's less competitive. There's probably less competitive ones being things like family medicine or pediatrics or something along those lines. So it, we've now raised up to that sort of like middle tier. And I, I can recall for me when I was sitting at the end of my second year, they have a lecture series designed to kind of teach us about what are the common scores, what are the things that people should be getting in order to match the specific specialty. So at my school, what they did was they broke down the data for the last like 10 years, 15 years, something like that. And they looked at, okay, what was the step one score of people who matched the specialty from my particular school? And what were the people who matched to, you know, the specialty, what were their step two scores? What was their, uh, did they pass CS on the first uh, try? And basically, where did they kind of fall in that spectrum? And I remember distinctly the guy that was giving this lecture, you know, he's going through it and it's a lot of scare tactics trying to get you fired up and emotional about getting the best possible board score and scoring a 240 or whatever on your step one. This is, it was kind of like the mentality, I, I've talked about it before in other videos about St. George's University and uh, Caribbean medical schools in general, is that the mentality is kind of like, you know, sink or swim, uh, kill or be killed. You know, you gotta be that much better than everyone else. So that was kind of the message he was conveying to us. And then he goes on to say that, you know, in your third year clerkships, make sure you get that letter of recommendation from psychiatry, because if all else fails, at least you could always do psychiatry as a backup specialty, right? Or at least you could always get into psychiatry, it was essentially his message, was that it was somehow easy and that less desirable people went into it, right? People with lower board scores, people with less to offer, people who weren't necessarily as smart as those who go into emergency medicine, surgery, etc. So the reality though is that that is changing and it's changing rapidly year by year. Every year since I matched, I've been noticing that like this is this is a trend that psychiatry is getting more and more competitive. It's more and more difficult to match and you better be damn sure like that's what you want to do and you're not playing any kind of games as like a, as using it as like a backup because I think it's very obvious to the people who are interviewing you that you're applying this as a backup, you know, especially, and you kind of give some little cues, and, you're, and remember, you're talking to psychiatrists, so they're looking for these things every single day. They talk to people who are manipula manipulative, people who are telling them lies, and they have to be able to discern between those things. So I think for the psychiatry, the psychiatrist interviewing candidates, they kind of see like, hey, this person's playing, you know, they're applying to this because they're afraid they're not gonna match to the surgery. But what they're really looking 
looking to do is max surgery. So I think going in with that mentality like, hey, I'll get psychiatry if all else fails, it's a bad decision. I always personally believe that whatever specialty you're applying to, whatever your choice is, whatever like really sold it for you in medicine, apply to that one singly and don't apply backups and such because it's really a waste of the other play, the other uh, specialties time to interview you uh, when you're not really interested in being a psychiatrist or a family med practitioner so just pro just go with if you're a good candidate you know whether or not you're a good candidate for that specialty there's plenty of data out there step scores grades schools letters of recommendation whatever you want to want to base it off of but there's plenty of information out there to let you know where you stand uh, amongst your fellow peers who are going to be applying to the same specialty so I don't believe that psychiatry is any longer one of these sort of cesspools for undesirables and that like, you know, if everything else fails, you can get there, that will be your, you, you could always fall back on that. Or even a lot of times I think for people who are coming, you know, internationally from, from other either Caribbean schools or from, from uh, schools out in other countries they have that mentality too they might have been like practicing physicians in their country as uh, say you know surgeons or medical doctors or pediatricians or whatever and then they kind of come to the US and apply to psychiatry because they assume that's easy and, and you know not to say that that's that's necessarily a, a bad thing I mean we're open to everybody who's who's interested but you know we would hope that you were you know practicing psychiatry in the United Kingdom practicing psychiatry in India, right? Because those are the kind of, we want people who are interested in psychiatry, not just people who are choosing it because they think it might be a little bit of an easier path or a possible way to get a residency match. So anyway, I just wanted to share a few of my